jazz the board game no affiliation we are a bipartisan podcast in the sense that uh statistically one of us or one of our listeners is bisexual and we love you for that uh and partisan in the sense that we are very partisan um down with automatic weapons trans lives matter and uh uh health insurance for all and more space suits for everyone <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's the big news of the week was uh, we couldn't have an all-woman spacewalk because there wasn't enough uh, female-sized spacesuits. Not enough mediums. Well, yeah, it's funny because they are unisex, right? Theoretically, but they don't really seem to pan out in this situation. One size fits men. <laughs> I also find it curious that the sizing that they, they don't have smalls. They've just like lopped that option right off, but like an extra large is necessary. I've been reading this book about space because that's what I do. And it's about like, um, like just, I think the opening sentence was like, rocket scientists hate you because like humans are a pain in the ass to put in space. We're not satellites. We need to like breathe and excrete stuff and, you know, like there's all these requirements we have that satellites don't. Um, so we're, we're sort of hard to work with. Um, in the Apollo days, the, this is such a silly thing for me to know, but the catheter that they had to use for urination, right? Or the, I don't know, the sleeve, whatever, right? Only came in um, large, extra large and double XL because um, when they asked the astronauts to put their measurements down for small, medium, large, every astronaut in the program was a large regardless of actual anatomy, so. <laughs> Large XL and double XL, which I mean, obviously, like that makes sense. Uh, the Apollo days. I love self surveys. That's all. It always it always pans out very honestly. And it's not really a NASA thing, is it? I mean, NASA's like, let's measure that. I don't. I'm not sure I understand how that wasn't part of being an astronaut, given everything else that you had to go through. That's true. I don't know. It's also like, I mean, I don't know. There's so many, there's so many things with NASA and going to space and like the assumptions that are made and not made and then oh. the measurements that are taken and not taken where you're just like, nobody thought of a, a what if or like a, <laughs> nobody just, it, I don't know. Just there's enough meetings about these things. You know that there's enough meetings about these things. That... What if oh, someone's yeah. junk wasn't actually large? <laughs> yeah. What if it was yeah. average? Yeah. So so what happens if if you're like a realist and you're like small? NASA's like, oh, sorry, you're not qualified to be an astronaut. What? Like seriously? That's that's the deal breaker. All of a sudden, you're like, like I went. That's in the that thing. I went in the G-force thing and threw up everywhere, but this is the, the deal breaker. I puked on the vomit comet, right? I mean, this is what's going to do me. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it's really silly. Um, I, I feel like there's a lot of opportunity for NASA to mature. Well, there's always a lot of opportunity for them to, like, I don't know, educate themselves on some regard. I feel like I'm sounding very harsh towards NASA, but it's just the, the situation. And there's that story of like, when they were packing like menstrual products to go to space and how many, like how many like tampons and products they thought was necessary for one. Like they just, nobody knows these things. It was just absurd what they thought was, I don't know. Yeah. In this episode think of Ask a Woman, <laughs> I think the characterization in the, in the article, though, is, is a, a little bit colored in the sense that, um, like, the NASA concept is um, if you have two, you have one. If you have three, you have two, right? So the expectation is, like, we're going to damage stuff. So I don't know. I, I feel like maybe that was just, like, typical NASA over-engineering. Mm -hmm. Having obviously not been in the room con conversation, but well, I, did I don't think know. What was interesting was that I know that um, because of gravity and science, 
everybody, when you're up in the International Space Station, your body changes and like morphs. But I didn't, I don't think I realized to what extent, because they were like, oh, one, one astronaut's grown two inches just because of like your spine straightening out. And like two inches is massive. I think I was thinking like more minuscule, but I'd like to grow two inches. <laughs> so it's my Apollo astronauts. Um, I think that, um, that, that, that that's like the root of some of the, the, the interesting about this book that I'm reading. I wish I remember the title, although it's a little crass in some parts, so maybe I shouldn't promote it. Um, that, that like, I mean, there's so much that like we found out in the Gemini and Apollo days that sort of helped in the shuttle days, but, but really now that we have been inhabiting the ISS for so long consecutively, like there's a lot more data, a lot more things that we understand now. Um, and all more things we have no idea how to deal with, right? Yeah. Yeah, like the backup bathroom system in the International Space Station is a bag near your ass. Okay, this, that seems like an area of opportunity for NASA, right? Like, space tourism is, a, tourism is not gonna fly because people are gonna need to use the restroom. And that's not gonna be an okay solution. <laughs> yeah, that's not gonna work out. Ah, oh, the I mean, glamour of space travel. <laughs> I mean, that's yeah. a tough sell when you're camping. <laughs> but I can't imagine how that would work with zero gravity. Oh, there are some audio recordings of no. birds escaping oh, no. on oh, flights. No. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, no, it's a good listen. It's, it's, oh, it's so bizarre. Space is so weird. And, and, like, we've been a quarter million miles from Earth. That's it. That's the furthest we've been. Like, we didn't even really, like, I don't know. I was thinking about this the other day, too. We talk about um, Apollo 8, like, leaving Earth's sphere of influence, right? But, like, we went to the moon, which is inherently, like, still an Earth's sphere of influence. Like, it's orbiting, I mean, I guess technically we were orbiting the moon instead of Earth, or they were, those, those astronauts. But, but, I mean, we didn't really break the influence of Earth. Like, we went to the satellite that's stuck in orbit around Earth. So we've just gone nowhere. Like we've, we've, we've opened the front door and then like, oh, looks big out there. Stepped out and been like, yeah, I'll come back. And then close the door and walk back inside. It's just, oh. Yes, when, when the uh, Vogons come <laughs> and tell us that our planet is scheduled for destruction or an interstellar <laughs> bypass, and they say, oh, the, but the plans are at Alpha Centauri. And we're like, well, we can't get to Alpha Centauri. And they say, that's your fault. I mean, yeah, that part. They've got a point. Uh, they do have a point. They it's absolutely valid. have a point. Yeah, yeah. Binary jazz, where Gary complains about space. Also, though, let's go back to the binary jazz board game and what. That I was, was stuck on the binary jazz board game for a while. I was trying to figure out how that would play. Yeah. Have you not played it? <laughs> no. I think I need to write. I just it. made it up, so I don't know what the rules are. <laughs> Well, I just, I immediately was like, what kind of little iconography tokens would there be? Oh, yeah. Which I got very excited by. <laughs> Alice can go straight to the, like, the design aspect, and I go straight to the rules mechanics. And with our powers combined, this is going to be a great board game. I want to be like, I, I want my character to be angry space guy, like, an, like a hunched over, like, short ogre guy that's really mad about Mars. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't follow the rules at all. It's just... Bounces yeah, around. yeah. When you roll the dice, you can move as far as you want because you're not going to get anywhere in anyway. We haven't gone very far from home. Yeah, <laughs> Put yourself anywhere on the board it doesn't matter anyway. There's got to be like uh, good card stock. Anyway, sorry. Yeah, that's <laughs> definitely the none the of this. None of this like thin. <laughs> no, I know waffly. Yeah, but it has to be a co-op game, right? Oh, for sure. Yeah, yeah. we like, all win together. Yeah. We all lose together. Yeah, I really like. Um, uh, game rights mechanics like the Forbidden series stuff where the board like kind of moves around. That seems appropriate for us. <laughs> the board would always be changing. I like that idea. Um, I want dice just because Yeah. I don't even, they don't need to be conventional dice. Like they could be just like this one has a picture of um, a uh, Dyson sphere on it and on this side and <laughs> the Dyson like sphere. bananas yeah, Dyson on the other sphere. side. The Dyson Sphere is like, that's, that's, the, that's the botch. If you roll a Dyson Sphere, then... Yeah, roll a Dyson yeah. Sphere, lose a turn. Yeah. <laughs> Spend that, your that's like for our, barbecue. our little iron of Monopoly. You're like, what is, whatever. 
there would be a spot where you'd have to find the game piece from another board game and introduce it. <laughs> <laughs> there would be one chance card. Just having dice that have nothing to do with the actuality of the game play. Roll the dice. Ignore the results. Play your turn. <laughs> <laughs> introduce a topic, then move on quickly, because that's what this is about. <laughs> <laughs> the the dice could be so there's there's a game called story dice um and it's just a series of dice with pictures on them or like icons and you roll the dice and then you have to come up with a story that goes along with the dice so it could be a die that it could be one die that has different pictures on it uh or or like many dice that has different pictures on it and you roll the dice and then you have to like introduce that as a topic yeah Ooh, i like that Kind of like a buzzword, but integration. Ooh, Gary yeah. may or may not be we, with us. We have lost Gary. Gary is frozen. <laughs> I do like oh, dice and sphere dice. This is an intriguing <laughs> concept. We're gonna need to kickstart this thing. <laughs> Just for the one, the dice and sphere dice that you can then include in any board game. <laughs> <laughs> Really is this like a that. one Dyson Sphere turn or a two Dyson Sphere yeah, turn? Yeah, two. Oh, no. Gary's completely gone. Now he's gone. I blame Charlotte. <laughs> she has a high metal frequency that affects the technology. That, yeah, that's probably it. Um, oh, so uh, that reminds me of a thing I was watching the other day about scams. Uh, so... <laughs> So there's a, um, there's a show that we watch that we've been watching with the kids uh, called Brain Games. Uh, mm -hmm. And Brain Games is basically just about the cool and interesting things that your brain does. And they had a, um, an episode on scams. And so they had this guy, um, uh, they, this whole segment where this guy was selling uh, what he called lava rocks. And they're the sort of like, you know, I don't know, like light, peachy, tan colored rocks that are very smooth and nice. Um, and he's introducing these lava rocks and saying that he's traveled around the world and uh, looking for uh, rocks like these, minerals like these, and that these, these particular rocks come from uh, a volcano, and they have, uh, an, they have extra uh, gravity. They have... Um, The, the ionosphere within the rocks increases the gravitational pull of the person that is holding the rocks. And so to prove it, he says, okay, I want you to, to stand with your arms out like this. And then he pushes on one of your arms to tip you over because, you know, gravity. Um, and then he says, okay, so now here's the rocks. I want you to put a rock in each hand and put your hands out like that. And then does the same thing and you can't do it. The actual reason why you can't tip them over is because you went from like, went from this to this. Oh. So pushing down here, you have more, you're more stable, but pushing down this way, you're more likely to tip. So anyway. I, I hope this is a continuation single... of the board game conversation. <laughs> <laughs> this, uh, this came out of, uh, so, never mind, something else. And, <laughs> We'll integrate charades into the board game, but yeah. this is a TV show. <laughs> um, so, so all the people that, at least all the people that they were showing on the show, um, bought uh, these, these rocks, right? And they're like 20 bucks or something. Uh, and so it, within an hour, he made 140 bucks. And then they go back to all the people who bought the rocks and they let them in on the joke. And like, he actually got the rocks okay. from like, out like a walk down the street in a park and just pick them up <laughs> and he's an actor and he's like they're doing this experiment about scams about how easy it is to be a scam and like you know he like follows all these particular like rules like uh voice of authority like he's an attractive young like dude uh wearing like not like you know a sweatshirt and a t-shirt like me like you know like a polo shirt and whatever like and and, and feels authoritative um and then, yeah, it was, it was, so, but anyway, that, that was tied to the uh, gravity of something. Now, I can't remember where we got, where we, how we got here, but. I, I think this was a first for us. I think this is the first time um, any of this has dropped from a call. Is that possible? I think that's accurate. Yeah. What, what do I win? 
Still a team. Uh, you you win a lava rock. You get to um, be in charge of the Kickstarter campaign mm -hmm. for our dice. Your dice expansion uh -huh. pack. Uh huh. <laughs> um. So did I also miss the topic? Because it would be fun for me to try and guess the topic based on what Chris is trying to define. The no, topic is. we didn't miss okay. the topic. We were, we were, we were, I was killing time. We were careening forward. <laughs> Mostly because we didn't know what to do when you just disappeared. <laughs> I hope someone said, do we go with Adamant? And someone replied, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> it was more of I'll a, catch up. Gary's gone now. <laughs> now Something what? we said. Yeah, I'm not sure what happened. So. No, we blamed the little one. Yeah, yeah. I like my Wi-Fi dropped on every device in my house at the same time. Well, baby's effects on technology. <laughs> as a that note. was that was it. That was that was where I where we how we got here. It was it was Charlotte's uh, gravitational pull. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the ionosphere magnetic. around Charlotte affected the Wi-Fi. Yeah. Okay, so I think we're ready for the topic. Probably. Yeah. Baby. <laughs> baby. Baby. Um, we probably have 10 minutes left. <laughs> Is that right? I don't know. Oh, I, I don't have like a clock on my phone. I never know so. until the timer goes off. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the topic for this week is hysterosity. 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 His, hysterosity or hysterosity? Historosity. So H I S T O R I C I T Y. Okay, so the historosity, the word of the day is historosity. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> I feel like that's a requirement, isn't it? Yeah, the, the historosity of a thing is, um, it's, it's related to the velocity of historical impact of an event. So, so no. for example, the Civil War had a lot of historosity immediately following the Civil War. Uh, and maybe playing into like the civil rights movement, but the historosity of the Civil War today is much lower than the historosity was of the Civil War, you know, in the years immediately following uh, the, the war. Um, historosity. historosity is um, the definition of um, the, the winner is the one who writes history, right? So historosity is the study of the alternative viewpoint of historical events. I like both of your strategies as far as enthusiasm and confidence level. <laughs> because if you just sort of like let it ride and then let it hang and then you're just like, yep. <laughs> I really, so I, I long for the time when I answer it and Allison gasps at how exactly accurate my answer is. We've, we've gotten um, close. We have gotten close. We've gotten you, close. Got There's never been an audible gasp, though. An right, audible. that's what I long for. Like, <laughs> just and like, then I just sign off, and you never hear from me again. That would be the series ending. Mic drop. <laughs> the series is that's that's very that unlikely happen. to happen. My work here is done. I'm not of this earth, and I just disappear. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I hope the, I hope the visual effects are awesome when you do. <laughs> like, I hope there's some flashing and some sparkle. I'll have to get prepared hue, for this. Obviously, my budget will <laughs> will have to my special effect <laughs> budget. It'll just be that like classic Apple backdrop of like the Eiffel Tower or whatever that weird green screen thing that's happening. <laughs> yeah, speaking of uh, speaking of interesting backdrops, did you all know that that Zoom now has a uh, fake backgrounds? No. No. Oh, well, it's not very effective. What was that? <laughs> but he's in space. <laughs> I, think. I hope you brought a plastic bag with you, Chris. <laughs> it is the glamorous side that they just never speak about. Same with all the, um, we've been watching a few like uh, mountain climbing and rock climbing documentaries. Oh. Ooh, now you're just traveling the world. There's only three. Oh. I mean, you can add, you can add your own. But my backdrop um, is already so glamorous. <laughs> I wonder if I can do that on the phone. Let's see. Probably not. Oh, that'd be amazing if you could do it on Virtual the phone. background. Oh, you can. Boom. Oh, that's good. Hold on. I can add one. Yeah. This is one. great. Let me see if I can find a picture <laughs> from space. <laughs> Favorites. Oh, I like
like that one. I, Chris, that one's very like, honey, I shrunk the kids. <laughs> it seems so to think here is me. It seems to think that my face is the same color as my the wall behind me. Yeah. Here's the first stage, and then here's the second stage, and here's the cutoff between the two. I love that you already have space backdrops at the ready. Even better was it was in my favorites, so it wasn't hard to find. <laughs> I took this photo. I wonder if I step out of the way if you can see the bottom. Yeah, so that's my neighbor's truck in the bottom there. I took this photo family. in my yeah. uh, front Wow, yard. that's that's see that's impressive. I you, you that's way better than that's way better than the effect it, it does on mine. That's it would it would be more effective if I like would stay in frame, I guess. Well, I like I like when you position yourself right in the midst of it, so it looks almost like an arrow going through your head. Oh. This is, this is harder to do than it would appear. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> a little Steve Martin, a little space. And here's my new, um, here's my new wallpaper on my phone. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> this is a, yeah, this so is, anyway. This is compelling, anyway, compelling podcast. audio, uh, audio content here. I'm sure well, it is. I'm fascinated yeah. by it, which is all that really matters. <laughs> this, is, this is when our show made historicity. <laughs> it's like jumping the shark. <laughs> um, I think you're wrong, Gary. Oh, I that's probably fair. <laughs> <laughs> that's probably fair. <laughs> I, I it's definitely the velocity of history. I like the concept of combining physics and history. That one, one. Hell swoop. Um. It sounds like a made-up word, so it probably has like a sillyish meaning. But I wonder if I'm thinking that because um, uh, I'm uneducated. Um, I wonder if I'm thinking that it because also, it sounds like hysterectomy to me. So <laughs> it's when you say goodbye. <laughs> it's when you say your, <laughs> your history. <laughs> your history. Like your personal timeline. You're like, <clears throat> yeah. My historicity is, you know, <laughs> I don't know, yay big. What? So osity. What? What is that suffix? mean banana oh look sure it's like we didn't want to go an episode without a banana there it is <laughs> thank you that was super helpful that's what i was looking for b is for banana yeah i was wrong we do have a banana left but it's hard <laughs> to hang a single banana oh no once you get down to the single banana you might as well have no bananas <laughs> yeah, wise, so words. Have wise one... words from allison everybody <laughs> we actually have one and a half there's a half of one in a bag or if you've planned ahead and you you left a little like crux of the banana bunch mm. at the top and you can still hang it on your on the that banana. seems like an unlikely thing to get everyone in this house behind. Yeah, that's a lot of planning. <laughs> like I could personally commit to that, but I don't know if I could get everyone Everybody else on board. On board. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's gonna be like a training session and understanding why this is important. You know, <laughs> I'm just not that kind of manager. I'm not a leader. You know, like. <laughs> It's sitting next to the banana stand. So if you were looking for a banana, as I was earlier, and said, oh, no, we're out of bananas, um, I didn't see it there. I guess I just need to, like, get up and walk over to the banana stand and inspect it. <coughs> so what you're saying is it was obviously flawed, and you tried to defend the historicity of it uh, <laughs> retrospectively um, by saying that it's actually well-designed currently. Um, yeah, why not? I can agree with that. I'm not actually sure what I was trying to say, but if someone else can find meaning in what I said, that's awesome. That makes me an artist. That makes me an artist, wow. That's, in that's an interesting conversation in itself. What makes somebody an artist? Oh, that is a good conversation. Let's have that. What does historicity mean? Let's talk about what makes someone an artist. <laughs> well, apparently, <laughs> bananas- you Misunderstood, and, and bananas, apparently. It's all part of the label. What makes a salad a salad? What makes an artist an artist? Uh, creating, I feel like the salad thing's more contentious. Creating, so, yeah. creating something and calling an art is what makes one an artist. Yeah. I mean, okay, well, that was easy. Putting, putting this cough drop on a, on a white table, that's art. I don't know what it's saying. That, like, take a photo, post that to Twitter, art, done. Yeah. Would, would wearing an oversized space suit for the next few days be considered art? Yes, absolutely. And depending also, on your locale, nobody will 
look twice at you. <laughs> also wearing an undersized spacesuit. <laughs> well, fortunately, I have both. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, I'm not ready. Yeah, I'm going to go on eBay after this episode and buy a spacesuit. They have those on eBay, right? eBay is everything. Sure. So. Uh, Historistic. Mm. Historist. Historistic. Historistic. Never mind. I was trying to his, like. Yeah, historicity would be the bendiness of history. The bendiness. <laughs> Flexibility. <laughs> I prefer bendiness. <laughs> I mean, bendiness is more accurate, but. Agreed. Exactly. What she said. <laughs> Do you remember when we used to do episodes during her nap time? I don't. <laughs> no, I appreciate this because then our our gender ratio is equal. That's Charlotte. true. That's true. That's a fair point. <laughs> yeah. Eventually, she'll just be old enough to to have her own little square on the on the screen. <laughs> yeah. It'll just be like whatever device she's on, like ah, ah, her chewing on it. At least now. <laughs> well, I'm 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 expecting her to start bringing topics. And yeah. A few months time, that's, I'm relinquishing control. <laughs> the color red is the topic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think for a lot of weeks it would be bananas <laughs> the topic, which I, she's right. <laughs> <laughs> it's not not the topic every week. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Historicity. Um... <clears throat> Don't get hysterical. It's historicity. I don't know. I'm really curious. I think we jump to the. I think we jump to the answer, and then we can we can hit these uh, this uh, listener question having to do with M and M's. Oh, having to do with M and M's. So it's about the historical accu actuality of persons and events. So like the, the historical velocity. You're pretty close. I think. <laughs> if not. Because it's basically what, oftentimes it has to do with things of religious nature. Um, the historicity of Jesus Christ actually being. A yeah, exactly. Like something being a myth or a legend or something. But what I also like about it is that it's also used in context of objects. So like the historicity of say two like objects and one like say, okay, this was in Lincoln's pocket when he was assassinated, and this is the same exact object, but it has oh. no historicity because it's, it was not in Lincoln's pocket when he was assassinated. So space artifacts are like that. So flown objects obviously have a greater historicity or a big yeah. implied value. And it's interesting anyway, because I also have been so, like, thinking oh, about it. Looking at eBay people, right now. Like Marie condoing all their stuff and like what has meaning and like, I can have two oh. have the, the same thing, but I'm like, oh, but this was the one that mm -hmm, mm -hmm, like had some sort of significance to me historically or whatever. Mm. Yeah. I like Marie Kondo as a verb. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, I do. It's really funny because before this whole Netflix thing, this was it was actually on my list of things to to bring to the table. It was like Marie Kondo. Mm -mm. Con Marie. Yeah, that, that wouldn't that wouldn't that wouldn't work now. I, I have not watched the show, but I know of the show. And I have seen her on Stephen Colbert. And she taught him how to fold a fitted sheet, which basically involved rolling it up. And yeah. I immediately then did that. <laughs> I uh I have not watched it either. And I many nights when I'm looking for like something new to watch, I stop on it and go, No, not not now. Not ready. Not ready. You're not ready? <laughs> not ready. I feel like I'm going to get rid of a bunch of stuff, which I'm already sort of doing, cleaning up the garage, getting ready to build an office in there. So, I, you know, I don't, I don't know that I need that distraction. Like, I need that, that sole purpose right now, getting the garage ready to build a thing. And then I can throw away all my other crap. I just like how, um, how she presents herself <laughs> to her clients and how no one knows how to talk to a translator. <laughs> and there's just, like, a lot of cultural things that – are minefields that are really humorous to watch as well. Oh, so she's not an English speaker? I didn't no, know that she's part. Not. She's oh, not. She's always. This could be fun then. Yeah. 
Oh, I forgot to mention too. I had to do this for my own benefit at the beginning of the episode. I have a big zit on my nose. It's making me self-conscious. Now that it's out there, I feel better. Great. On an audio podcast? Well, for all our I don't know. Members. We're on YouTube, right? We are. We are. Nobody watches I it. Hate, I, but if I you hate for someone to bump into it and think that this is what my nose always looks let's like. Let's get our vanity domain. Oh, yeah, that's true. And we're all about vanity. Yeah, we're all about vanity. <laughs> Clearly. <laughs> Clearly. Clearly, we're Clearly. showing up. In a big way. I, I, we've been we've been watching a lot of uh, great British Bake Off. Oh, so That's a fun good. one. Yeah. So good. So polite. What's um, what's the M M&M and M question? I'm dying to hear it. Okay, the M M&M and M question. Other than jalapeno, mm. what new kinds of M M&M and M or potato chip flavors would you be curious to try? So who is who sent this question in? Was this was sent by Sarah. Hmm. Like well, immediate. Sarah, I'm glad you asked. I'm like, it's not me. So. Um, I would go for any, uh, <clears throat> like, Indian or Thai food flavor uh, or spice. Um, yeah. I want I'm red on bean. a chip or an M&M or, you know, generally. The Indian, yeah. the Indian market is amazing, and you should go. I should. You've had like red bean ice cream, right? Red bean ice cream, no. Oh, it's super good. So red bean ice cream, I would recommend, and then I want red bean M&Ms. I've had mochi. Ooh, that'd be good. That would, would that work in m M&M? and I mean, I guess like, it, why wouldn't it work? I want, yeah, I, I kind of agree with the like, I want some sort of like Thai curry chip situation. Yeah, um, yeah. Red bean M&M's a, I could get behind for sure. I had a I had a Thai pizza once. Uh, that was pretty good. Yeah. Might have to go explore the chip section of my local grocery store. <laughs> Do you remember when there were the taco flavored chips out a couple? It may still be out. I don't know. Taco flavored chips out a couple years ago. There's a whole wide array of, of chip flavors that I haven't tried. There's like poutine flavored ones now. Oh. And all sorts of <clears throat> all sorts of things that. So I've been, I've been, we've been making poutine, uh, and it's, it's probably like silly American gringo poutine, uh, but I'm calling it poutine anyway, because, because it's Cause like, try and stop me. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's like fries with stuff on them. Oh, because um, it's delicious and melted and, and so mm. comforting. Like, so, uh, so, but we, so we have a, um, we got a, a food processor recently and the food processor has a, a spiralizer. So we get carrots and potatoes and beets and we spiralize them so that they're really long, like noodly things, and then mm. bake those and then like do like tofu mm. scramble or something to put on top. Uh, and then like, and, and yeah, and then like have a, we have a, there's a, you, there's a cashew based cheese, basil cheese sauce that we make um, that we put on top. Um, do you have a tofu press? I do, but I don't use it. Okay. Usually, cause usually when I'm making tofu, I'm like, I'm just going to cut it up and put it on the frying pan. Yeah, Press, pressing is just like, I mean, it, it's good if the thing if you, it's good if you actually want it to be drier. But like even then, I don't I don't hardly use it. Nothing um, about what you described as traditional poutine, but it sounds delicious. Oh, I know it's not traditional poutine. <laughs> we, we had it, but then I had the brilliant idea like um, uh, over the weekend. Let's do a poutine bar, and so we got like. We got hmm. fries, we got like regular like shoestring fries and uh, sweet potato fries and we, and we made those. And then we just had stuff. Like, I'm, like, I'm gonna make some mushrooms and I'm gonna make some other things. And like, just here, here's a bunch of bowls and here's your, here's your fries and put stuff yeah. on it. So good. It's better than and, like a potato bar in my opinion. Yeah. I yeah. I think bars in general though for food are, are a great idea. That's, that's basically all of, my, all of my cooking for the family has been turned just just devolved into making a bar of stuff. But I think that really aligns with like <laughs> your own adventure board game style mindset. It, it's I find that way less intimidating. I should do bar foods for my, yeah. not bar food, never mind. I should do <laughs> foods in a, uh, what would you call that without, I don't know. Bar format? I should do I foods guess. like Chris does foods. Yeah, food. Buffet style? Yeah, buffet style. <laughs> family style, yeah. I guess. Build your own. And then you could stand for oh. like behind with like a weird chef's hat. And yes. Just yes. Flower. I think I own a weird chef's Donate hat. Donate to Binary Jazz. And I think I own a weird chef's hat. I'll have to look for that. Chef's hats. All if, uh, 
Wear them if I find my weird chef's hat, I'll send you a photo of it. It's a really I think it's not one, one of the tall ones. I think it's a short one, but it's covered in peppers. <laughs> they also have course, pants that match. Of course it's matched with peppers. Yeah. A spiralizer, on a side note, a spiralizer is something that I keep, like, I just need to get one. I don't know why I'm pulling <laughs> over so much. I don't, it's not a huge purchase. I did not think, so we had a spiralizer and we didn't really use it. Um, but then we got the food processor and we've been using that a lot um, because it has a spiralizer. It has, um, you can shred things with it. And that's extremely uh, helpful because like, um, we often try to like we're always trying to stick more vegetables in the kids' food, um, and carrots are an easy thing to stick in, um, but shredding carrots is obnoxious. But I can get a stick of I can shred a stick of carrot in like two seconds, like zoom, done. Oh, that's so nice. Yeah, it's amazing. And so sneaky. <laughs> yes. Yeah, and and then also with the food processor, just generally you can sneak in other foods, like um, just like. Just throw it in the food processor and it gets chopped into little pieces and then it's much easier to, to like eat and by accident. We do, um, well, I say we, Rhonda does a lot of muffins with vegetables in them as a Trojan horse of vegetables for the children. <laughs> the Trojan horse of vegetables. <laughs> I don't even need to be that sneaky because I know I'm the one that's making my own food and yet I still appreciate a good... <laughs> A good Trojan horse muffin. <laughs> oh, my sister-in-law makes some zucchini bread. That's like crazy good. Crazy. Forget the board game. We just need to come out with a binary jazz cookbook. All of the above. <laughs> the cookbook. Maybe that's part be, of. Maybe that's part of the board game. The cookbook will be the the um the stretch goal of the board game. So if we get our if we get enough uh enough donations or pledges for our board game, then at a certain point we'll we'll get to the point where we can also bundle uh, a cookbook. Nice. So, so what kind of funding will we need for this? The digital edition, we would need <laughs> any funding. Eight dollars. Yeah, eight dollars would get the digital edition done. I feel. <coughs> <clears throat> we need to. We need to 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 price out uh, um, printing costs. It printing. would also depend on on if we're doing actual like, you know, like you know, plastic uh, pieces or, you know, just punch out uh, tokens. Or Dyson Sphere. <laughs> and, and dice, dice is going to be a, an expense, yeah. I mean, like, the meat alone dice are cheap. produce these Dyson Spheres. Well, there's not going to be actual Dyson Spheres involved. <laughs> I, um, I, when I was doing the e-commerce thing, we were at a trade show in Las Vegas, and there was a booth set up that did nothing but dice. Um, and... I had learned this trick from another sales guy somewhere else, and he always carried a 12-sided dice with him. So when he was out drinking with people that weren't customers, just colleagues, out drinking with people, they would just roll, and the person who rolled the lowest number would be the one that paid for drinks. That was that was the fair way of determining who paid for that round, and they do it every round. So that just you know took it that out. So it never felt like really cool. likes D and D. <laughs> um, he did, yeah, he did. Um, just no was, one was else, no one else would carry a 12-sided die. <laughs> it's gonna say well, I. Thank you for listening to Binary Jazz. If you like this episode, you can subscribe to us on iTunes or Google Play. You can visit us online at binaryjazz.us or follow us on Twitter at, at @binaryjazz. Don't forget that you can ask us a question through the form on the website or on Twitter, and we'll read it aloud on the next episode of Binary Jazz.